Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is so show you how to solve trigonometric equations. And in this example, we're going to show you how to show all of the solutions. So basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the inverse trigonometric um, operations to help us go ahead and solve. So basically, you know, when we're looking into solving, you know, we've looked at solving quadratics, we looked at solving linear equations, and so forth. And basically, all we did was use our inverse operations. You know, if, if we had like x plus 3 equals 5, well, we saw that our variable was being added by 3. So we undid that using the inverse operation of adding, which was subtract. Subtract on 3, and we got x equals 2. For quadratics, we had to go ahead and use the zero product property, uh, or we had factor, then use the zero product property, quadratic formula, so forth and so on. But the main important thing was using inverse operations. So in this case, I want to be able to find all the solutions for x. Well, you can see the operation that's being applied to this x is I'm taking the sine of it. So to undo taking the sine, or the cosine, or the tangent of a function, we, the inverse operation is going to be taking the inverse of it. So basically what I'm going to be doing is taking the inverse sign of both sides. Therefore, I'm going to be left with x is equal to sine inverse of square root of 3 over 2. Now, previously we've worked on finding the inverse of a, func uh, inverse of a value. And basically what we're looking for is we're looking for the angle. Um, and more commonly, we're going to be looking for the angles you know, on the unit circle. Um, if we don't, if, there, if the value that we're trying to take the inverse of is not a common value of a point on the unit circle, then we'd use our calculator and approximate its answer. But for all of these cases, all of my values represent a, um, a coordinate uh, on the unit circle where an angle crosses the unit circle. So what we need to do is find those angles. So basically, what I have to do is I have to tap into my knowledge of the unit circle. So for each one of these problems, I'm going to quickly kind of sketch my, uh, quickly sketch like a unit circle. So therefore, I can kind of remember and identify you know, what are going to be the angles that correspond to when the sine value is, you know, or cosine or tangent is of a certain point. And if you don't have the unit circle memorized, make sure you have it in front of you so you can kind of follow along. All right. Um, so we have, when is the sine inverse uh, equal to the square root of 3 over 2? Now, I'm not going to draw the whole unit circle. Um, I'm just going to draw, I know that that's positive. So I know that the um, sine is only going to be positive in the first and the second quadrant. So I'm actually just going to graph the top half of the unit circle here. Okay. Um, now, square root of 3 over 2, if you remember when you're kind of drawing those coordinates, what we notice is the square root of 3 over 2 creates us with our first point here. And I'll draw this in here just to kind of give you that. Square root of 3 over 2. Remember, sine represents the y-coordinate. Well, that angle is pi over 3. Okay. Then if we reflect that over the y-axis, we also have this other angle, which pi over 3, 2, um, which this would be 2 pi over 3. All right. So I basically have two solutions here. I have x can equal the angle of pi over 3. And x can equal the angle of 2 pi over 3. Oh, I know. I kind of wanted to. Actually, you know what? I need to use the whole unit circle to make my points. Otherwise, it might be a little bit confusing. OK. So let's write x is equal to pi over 3. And x is equal to 2 pi over 3. All right. So if you were to plug, you know, take the sine of pi over 3, you'd get square root of 3 over 2. If you were to take the sine of 2 pi over 3, you'd get square root of 3 over 2. So those are our two angles. But they're not asking us to find you know, the solutions in between 0 and 2 pi. They're asking us to find all of the solutions. So you can see, basically, we have two angles. We have this angle and that angle. And what we can do is, if you remember, we can always add in coterminal angles. So if I took pi over 3, and if I added 2 pi to this, then I would come right back over to my exact same angle again, which would cross at the exact same point. If I took 2 pi over 3, and added 2 pi to that, again, the same thing would happen. So therefore, we have to also include coterminal angles when we're finding all the solutions. So therefore, the way to represent that is we're going to add 2 pi. Add 2 pi. Now, remember coterminal angles is, you know, unless we give you restriction, is infinite. You can keep on adding 2 pi over and over and over again. So therefore, we need to have a variable that can represent how many times we're going to add our coterminal angles which is going to exactly be a variable, because it's going to represent all the solutions. And we're going to use the variable n to represent that. So our solution in this case would be pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, and x equals 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. 
Now let's go ahead and get into tangent. Now I'm not going to take the inverse tangent on both sides. I think hopefully you understand that we need to find the angles where tangent is equal to 1. So again, I'm going to go back through the unit circle. And I'll draw the whole one here, because otherwise I don't really think it makes too much sense. Now, when tangent is equal to 1, uh, I remember by looking at the unit circle that the point that the angle of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. And remember, tangent represents the y coordinate over the x coordinate, which you know those are exactly the same coordinate. So when you divide, divide them, you're going to equal to 1. Now, is that, the only way, is that the only angle where tangent of x is equal to 1? Well, tangent is positive in the first and in the fourth quadrant. Because in the second quadrant, cosine is negative. In the fourth quadrant, sine is negative. But in the third quadrant, sine and cosine are both negative, so they divide to give you positive. So we also have this angle is going to cross that negative square root of 2 over negative square root of 2. But let's see what that angle is. So that would be pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. OK, so now when we're writing our solutions here, um, a lot of students just like to write, you know, oh, well, let's write down everything we have. And that you know, makes sense. OK, but there's a little bit of a trick here. Um, yes, you could do the exact same thing what we did here, you know, 2 pi n and plus 2 pi n. But that's really not a simplified answer. Because what you notice is the, a the distance between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, that distance is the same as the distance halfway around the circle. The distance is really pi. So if I, have this, if I have pi over 4, I add pi, that takes me to 5 pi over 4. If I add pi again, that takes me to pi over 4. Add pi again, and just, so as long as I keep on adding pi, I'm going to hit each of these angles, which are going to be solutions. So rather than adding 2 pi n like I had to do for this one, I can simplify this problem by not having to even write 5 pi over 4, but just writing pi over 4 plus pi n. And that's still going to represent all of the solutions. Uh, now let's go ahead and get into cosine of x equals negative 1 half. Again, first thing we'll do is we'll draw the nice big unit circle here. All right, now cosine of x equals negative 1 half. Now remember, when we're trying to identify the angle where cosine is equal to negative 1 half, we've got to identify, well, which quadrant is cosine negative? Cosine is negative in the second and the third quadrant. So what point is it equal to negative 1 half? Well, we know it's equal to 1 half, positive 1 half, at the angle of pi over 3. So it's going to equal to negative 1 half at the angle pi over 3. Let's go with this one. Here we go. 2 pi over 3. Then here would be 3 pi over 3. And then we get down to 4 pi over 3. OK. So we have basically two angles where it's going to be where it's going to work. We have 4 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. The pi over 3 just shows that that's when it's positive. But here's when cosine is going to be negative. So our two answers are 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Again, as you notice, like in the first problem, they're not related to each other across you know, um, a distance of pi. So therefore, I'm going to have to represent both of the solutions. And then I'll just add 2 pi n to both of them. And that's basically it. Um, all right, so now let's get into cosine of negative, uh, square, uh, negative square root of 2 over 2. So again, another cosine. Um, negative square root of 2 over 2, hopefully you recognize that's going to be pi over 4. So rather than even drawing the positive like I had to do over there, uh, I'm just going to do negative. I know it's going to be negative here and negative down here. So if over here is pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, this angle would be 3 pi over 4. And again, this point is negative square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. This would be 4 pi over 4. And then this angle would be 5 pi over 4. And again, guys, I'm just going off the, my memory of the unit circle. So to follow along, if you're kind of getting stuck um, or you don't have the unit circle like really well memorized, I would make sure you have it in front of you as I finish up the last of these problems. So therefore, we have 5 pi over 4 as our two solutions. Again, there's really the, you know, I have to add 2 pi to keep on getting back the same solutions. So I'm going to write them as x equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n, and x equals 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. All right, so now let's get into sine of x equals 0. So when does sine of x equal 0? Well, there's basically two points here. Remember, sine represents the y-coordinate. So it can either be here or it can equal here. 
So you could say x is equal to 0 or x is equal to pi. Those are basically the two values that when you take the sine, sine of 0, you're going to get 0. Sine of pi, you're going to get 0. Um, but what we notice is, again, these again are a distance here of pi. So rather than having to add 2 pi like I've had to do for these other ones, let's actually make this dash. I don't want to confuse you. Um, like I do these other ones, I can just add pi. Now, if I use n as my, as my um, kind of multiplier here for the number of terms here, well, if n is 0, my, my angle is 0. If n is 1, my, um, my angle is pi. So therefore, using just x equals pi n is going to satisfy all of my solutions. All right, so now let's get into the last one. And this one usually always gets students because you know sine, cosine um, are fairly easy because they just represent the x and the y coordinate. And if you remember the unit circle, for dealing with the unit circle, it's fairly easy just to kind of remember those coordinate points. But tangent, remember, represents the y coordinate over the x coordinate. So sometimes, especially for pi over 6 and pi over 3, you've got to make sure you simplify that. So I know the answer here is going to be pi over 6 is going to be one of those solutions. But let me just show you again. The coordinate point is square root of 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. So if I was going to take the tangent of those points, I would have to do um, y over x. Well, now when I go ahead and simplify that, I'm left with 1 over the square root of 3. Then I rationalize the denominator, and I obtain the square root of 3 over 3. So just showing you and proving my point that the tangent, inverse tangent of square root of 3 over 3 is going to be pi over 6. All right? Um, and you, know, you could also test you know, pi over 3 just to verify that. Um, but that's just going to equal the, tangent of pi, the uh, inverse tangent of pi over 3, or the square root of 3, is just going to, or the tangent of pi over 3 is the square root of 3. OK, so here we have this value. That equals. But remember, tangent is positive in the first and in the fourth quadrant. So we also have this angle over here. Well, if that's pi over 6, that's going to be 6 pi over 6. This angle would be? 7 pi over 6. Again, though, they have, if I just take pi over 6 and add pi, I get 7 pi over 6. If I add pi again, I come back to my same angle, uh, which would actually be uh, 7 pi, 13 pi over 6, but it's going to be the, at the exact same value. So my solution here, I can just write x equals pi over 6 plus pi n. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve your trigonometric equations by finding all of the solutions. Thanks.